So since this is an exponent rule review, I thought it would be wise, we'll see if it is or not, to actually write some of the rules back up at the top just to remind me, and I have them in one place this way. So first rule is big numbers, if I use the fancy term here, that's called a coefficient. The big numbers in front, the four, the eight, the negative three, the five, okay, those numbers. Big numbers don't play little number rules, okay? So here's, here's what we're trying to say. If you see coefficients and they're multiplying, you're gonna multiply them. If you see the big number and you're dividing them, you're gonna divide them. There's nothing cute or fancy. What you see is what you get with those. When we talk about exponents, it's the little numbers that have to play by these rules. Because if they don't, then we run into trouble. So, we'll kind of play this as we go. So for instance, on number one, I got big number, four times eight. Multiply them together. Okay, I get 32. What about the exponent, so? So here comes our first exponent rule in review. Bless you. When we multiply coefficients, mul oh my gosh, Hardy, are you serious right now? Multiply exponents. We add them up. I know that seems weird, counterproductive. When we're when we're doing math, you're like, you want me to multiply and add? That just doesn't seem right. But that's how it works with these. So here with my x's, I do have one question before we do this though. Okay, I see x to the second, there's an exponent. What exponent's on this x over here on the right if I don't see one? One. So that's just going to be x to the 2 plus 1. And all I have left to do then is add those together. Now I'm ready to go. So when we're multiplying, we're going to add exponents. So like, okay, it looks like we're going to be doing that here for a couple of problems. So let's, let's play. Again, we're multiplying the big numbers, don't add them. What's negative 3 times 5 going to be? Negative 15. And I would say, at least on the notes, if you get the hang of it and you don't want to show this extra step in the practice, you can. But otherwise, here's my x's. They got to have the same variable that we're working with. And we're going to add those up. And then the y's. And if colors would help you to see the difference with some of these things, grab colors. It's a good plan. So once I have that, I got to go wake me a couple people up. Just a minute. I'll be back. For those of you watching on video, you might fast forward me in places, but that's okay. We're, we're going to get this done. We're going to get this done. Back with you. That's good. It's a good way for me to get an exercise in. Did you run any pencil, sir? Good? All right. Let's keep it rolling. <laughs> All right, so I do that. So I'm like, okay, let's keep going. So here's what I'm gonna do. For those of us in class right now, I'm gonna freeze frame. Hi. Okie dokie, thank you. So I am going to freeze frame. Which just means I want you to try number three using the ones you've done in the first two. I know there's a twist in there. They're throwing negatives at you, but we're still just adding them. So don't do anything different. What's that? 
We'll chat about that in a minute. Yeah, we'll chat about that. If you look at the directions, your final answer can't have one. But the question is going to be, are we still going to have one? So go as far as you can. And then we'll discuss what we have to do. But just follow the rules straight up. Don't do anything crazy. Multiply the bigs. Add the littles. And kind of work it through there. Okay. So, if I multiply my bigs, 9 times 2 is 18, okay. If I add my exponents, same variable, negative 5 plus 3, negative 2, okay. 8 plus negative 6, or you could just say 8 minus 6, since it's that way, is going to be positive 2. But, I did have a couple of you ask, while it was frozen there, well, can I have a negative exponent? Because if you look at the answers, it says no decimals and no negative exponents. That looks like a negative exponent. So, that's going to lead us to our next rule review up top. Which is, we flip... negative exponents. So here's what that's going to mean for us. That new packet page is So for instance, we'll put a couple of examples up here with it. So we got something to look at. So like if I had x to the negative third, let's say. I'm going to make me a little fraction if I don't happen to have one. And what this means is I'm going to flip. And when I flip the exponent, it becomes positive. It's almost like, hey, this exponent has a bad attitude about things. So we're going to help it get a good attitude. We're going to give it a new environment to be in. So if it's negative somewhere, I can make it positive by flipping it. So here's what we're going to do here. I do have one negative exponent. So we need this to get down below. So 18 is behaving itself. It's positive still. We're going to leave it alone. It's got good vibes. X to the negative second, we don't do that negative thing. It's got to be banished to the denominator, to the bottom of my fraction. Then it likes things better. It's, it's happier down there. It's positive. Y to the second, behaving itself. It's positive. We leave it alone. So it doesn't mean we can't work with negative exponents. It just means when we get to the end, we got to make sure there aren't any there. We're, we're not going to have any negativity. Just exponents. We can have negative coefficients. Just not negative exponents. So we're making some progress here. Hardy's finding out he writes a little big, but that's okay. So I get to the next problem. Oh, oh. Look, look. Parentheses at an exponent. Okay. This is called power to power. Exponents to exponent. And when this happens, we're going to multiply the exponents. Now, some of you may be wondering, like, wait a minute, I've, I've heard some of this stuff before. Some of it may seem new, but you've heard some of it because every one of these rules we've discussed the couple of days before the quiz, as we were doing some things with exponents at the end of unit six. So I'll show you at the end, if you took those notes at the end of unit six, that could even come in handy on this. So 
This three is going to go to the two, two to the third power, and it's going to go to this four. Four times three. Again, the three is an exponent. It's not two times three. Okay, it's two to the third power. So if you're trying to do that on the calculator, which is probably a good idea, your exponent button is right here above the divide. There it goes. I get my three. So two to the third is two times two times two. That's how many times I'm multiplying two by itself. So that's where the eight's coming from. And then we just multiply the exponents that are left. No negative exponents. That's good. We're done. So as we do these, we're going to start having, oops, try it again. We're going to start having some issues that come up that you got to be aware of. So let's play it again here. That two goes to this negative four. goes to that negative 3 and goes to that 8. Okay, anytime there's an exponent outside the parentheses, we need to make sure that it gets to everything inside, exponents and coefficients as well. So, again, if I'm not sure what this is, Make sure the parentheses are there with your negative. Negative 4 squared, negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. And again, there's no shame if you're not sure about signs to use the calculator. That's what they're here for. <laughs> and why to the 16? Now, here's the question. Am I done? I don't see any decimals. That's good. Do we see any negative exponents? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I see negative exponents. So, again, if your number or exponent is behaving, it's positive. It has a smile. It's ready to go. Leave it alone. It ain't doing nothing wrong. But if it is, oh, if it's not behaving itself, it's being negative. Flip that sucker. But if they're nice, if they're doing what they're supposed to, leave them alone. Okay. And sometimes, okay, this can get really, really kind of screwy. So, this is the screwiest problem we are going to run into on this side. What do I do if there's a negative outside to begin with? You have a choice. You can flip the entire thing at the start if you want to. Now, if that can totally fix the problem, maybe, maybe not. Or if you are a creature of habit, kind of like me, you can go ahead. We can still distribute the negative two. We can do exactly what we did in number five. So I'm like, okay, I got seven to the negative two. I got X to the negative four times negative two. And I got y to the 9 times negative 2. Again, whether you show this step when you're doing your practice or not is up to you. I don't think it's a terrible idea, though. So I'm going to do one step before I start flipping. I want to clean this stuff up first. What's negative times negative equal? Positive. Okay, woo, that one knew like bad stuff was going on and fixed itself. Okay. So I've made it to here. <clears throat> mm -mm -mm. 
It's the most negativity we've had so far. Okay, we're going to fix it. You can have, that's a good question. I can have a negative coefficient, but I cannot have a negative exponent on it. So, 7 to the negative second, mm -mm. Negative three. down you go, down you go, positive exponent. Does x to the 8th need to flip? Nope. It's positive. It's doing all right. We'll leave it alone. Y to the negative 18th is negative. We don't like that. Whoop. Flip it down. That's right. It knows me mean business. It got positive. I'm okay if you leave it this way, but if we want to finish this off and kind of simplify it a little, 7 squared is 49. Like if you were looking at one of my answer keys when you're working on these, I'm probably going to put the 49. But as long as you have the positive exponent on there, I'd be happy with that. So some of these really do have multiple steps. But as long as we get to the positive exponents at the end, we're good. So you're like, okay, Hardy, you've got to be running out of rules because, well, we're kind of running out of room. One rule left. One rule. The last one, we're going to squeeze it up here because I really don't have anywhere else to put it. And I've run out of different colors to use, so back to black it is. Okay. When we divide, because we got fractions coming, I see divide coming. We're going to subtract the exponents. In these last three problems, you're going to start running into some choices. <coughs> Excuse me. On how we're going to do this. Because many of these problems, I'm going to have two or three of these rules to deal with, and it's up to me what order I want to do them in. So, I get to number seven, and I'm like, okay, big numbers don't play by little number rules. Four <laughs> divided by 12. Point three, 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 three. Third. It is. No decimals. Well, Hardy, what the heck? That's right. Our friend, right below alpha here, math, and two enters. One third. Move that up a little bit. You know there's a one here. So here's the next thing. When we're subtracting the exponents, because we're dividing, you're always going to put your answer where the bigger exponent's at. So like here. 9 minus 1, 9 is bigger than 1. So 9 minus 1, I'm going to actually write it here. Okay, with my y's, 6 minus 3, 6 is bigger. Again, if you're doing this in your head as you're doing the problems, I have no issue with that. 9 minus 1 is 8. 6 minus 3 is 3. No negative exponents. Yay. I'm good. I will make a suggestion, though. Even though you can go any route you want with these. <coughs> Subtracting with negatives can get tricky. So here's what I'm going to suggest. When we get to number 8, 6 divided by 8, and oh, don't do decimals, math and runner, it is. Okay, I would suggest at this point doing your flipping. So this is where I don't like to deal with negative exponents. So you, negative 3, uh-uh, down to the bottom you go to become positive. Why to the fifth you're behaving yourself? We'll leave you alone. Down here at the below in the denominator, x to the sixth, 
You're behaving yourself. I will leave you alone. But here's a new twist. I have a negative exponent, but it's down below. The rule has not changed. Flipping still needs to occur, but now we're going to flip up to the top with that y to the fifth. So when we say flip it, top goes to the bottom, bottom goes to the top. And everything is positive now, which makes my life so much better. Because now, all the y's are together up top, and they're positive. So what am I going to do with those fives? Add them, multiply them, subtract them. What am I doing? Adding. 5 plus 5 is 10, because that's what we do when we multiply. We add the exponent. And we're going to do the same thing down here in the denominator. Now, could I have just subtracted before and done division? I could. And then take the negatives and flip them? I could. I just think positives are a whole lot nicer to deal with. But that's just me. Okay. Now we're going to, we're going to, we're going to test you out here a little bit. Okay. Negative three, big number, negative three. Do I need to flip that negative three? No. Big numbers don't play little number rules. That negative three is like, oh, if I want to be negative, I'll stay right here. Okay, okay. X to the negative fourth, stay or flip? Flip. Flip. We don't do negativity here. Y squared? You're good. You're positive. That's it. You're like, but wait a minute. Why, why am I not subtracting? There's still division. These have to be the same variable for you to keep doing the rules. How do you mean? That's where we're having to finish up. There's no, there's no same variable. Which is negative. Yeah, there's all sorts of issues going on here. So, first thing, what's 8 divided by 4? Huh? What's 8 divided by 4? 2. 2. You, you two divide the different exponents. Now, let's see. X, X is behaving itself. We'll leave that alone. Y, not behaving itself. To the denominator you go. Okay, we've already dealt with the 8 and the 4. We divided that to get 2, so we don't have to worry about that 4 anymore. W to the negative third, mm-mm. Up we go. Z to the eighth, you're all right. But now, what was mentioned at the start, pardon me, none of the variables are the same. If none of the variables are the same, I can't do anything else. That's it, I'm done. Okay. This, what we're doing here, is over three quarters of what the next quiz is going to be. It's just doing basic exponent rules with having this right here. So when you're practicing, and you're going to be practicing because we need to do this, it's like anything else. Stars, okay, I'll use the popular people that are out there right now. Travis Kelsey don't just sit and watch YouTube videos all day and be in, in all pro tight end. He's out there catching balls and practicing. Taylor Swift doesn't just stand in the stands jumping up and down and wearing goofy things. That's not how this works. She practices and works a lot. So, the only way we get better at this is to practice. It's just this front page. Now, wait a minute before I say that. Okay, I lied. Um, yes, you do. This is in the practice packet. The new one you just got. The littlest practice packet you will get from me all year. Guaranteed. It's true. We're having a quick turnaround. So now, simplify. No decimals. No negative exponents. 
keep the examples close because most of these are super similar to something you've already seen. So for instance, I just want to do number one to get you started. And I want to show you a problem on the back, which we'll work through. And then I'm going to be bopping around, seeing if I can help. Number one, you could do two different ways. I'll show you both, but just to kind of let you see that you have options. One thing I could do is say, oh, I see a negative exponent there. So I'm going to leave x to the eighth alone. I'm going to take x to the negative fifth, and I'm going to flip it down. Because that's what we do with negative exponents. But now it's become a fraction. So when we're dividing, what am I doing with my exponents? We subtract them. X to the third. I'm done. Okay. Could you? Could you? Yes. Since you're multiplying, could you just have done a plus negative 5. You sure could. 8 plus negative 5 is 3. And I get the same answer. So it's up to you what you're more comfortable with. Are you comfortable working with adding and subtracting negatives? That's cool. If you're not, take the negatives and flip them and keep everything positive. Just keep working. Keep moving forward. Keep trying. And the answers are at the bottom so you can see if you're going along good as you're doing these. One last thing from me. And I do. I appreciate the attention today. I didn't have to stop a whole lot of times here to kind of get things back on task. And that's appreciated. Okay. 17 and 18. Circle which student or students, it could be more than one, are correct Explain why. Okay. So they all are doing the exact same problem. But they're all doing it a different way. So I look at John here. I'm like, okay, John, what are you up to here? Ooh, okay, I see what you're doing. To get from here to here, John did x to the 7 minus 2 because that's what we do when we divide. There's my x to the 5th. What do we do when we go power to power again? We multiply the exponents. So 5 times 3 is 15. John is good. John did it right. He followed the rules. Okay. Good job, John. Okay, let's see if Trent's on top of things here. So now it looks like Trent decided... with the exponent to distribute, to multiply the exponent first. So x to the 7 times 3 and x to the 2 times 3. Because that's what we do when we do power to power. 7 times 3 is 21. Cool. 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, so far so good, Trent. And then when we divide... We subtract. 21 minus 6, 15. Trent, all star. This works. What happened to Nick? Now let's see what happened to Nick here. It looks like Nick tried to simplify inside, but it looks like to me that Nick did 7 plus 2. Nick got division and multiplication mixed up. And so Nick, we need to do a little bit of an explanation. Okay, Nick's wrong. Why is he wrong? Because he did 7 plus 2 and he should have done 7 minus 2. Then he'd have been on top of it, like John wants. But this happens. It's how Nick learns. So that's it. If they did it right and you kind of show me the step, that's fine. You don't have to explain nothing. But if they screw up, try to find where they screwed up. 
That's going to make things easier. So again, new unit, new short section, go for it, get some of these done. That way tomorrow when we get together and we're kind of doing some of this stuff again, I can have more people involved with stuff because you're going to know what you're up to.